Little disclaimer before we get into this. There's a very real chance that you will destroy your MacBook if you try this. I've tried to get all the numbers right. I've tried to get, you know, match up the voltages and the amperages, but you're dealing with electricity. I'm not an engineer, I'm just a hobbyist. If I screwed something up and you try this, you're trying it at your own risk. And if you screw up your MacBook, it's not my problem. Hey, this is Jesse with Create This. Today, we're going to attempt to make a solar MacBook Pro charger. This is a wall wart, you know, charger. This is genuine Apple. This is my MPPT Genesun charge controller with a 20 volt charging voltage. So the point of this is to make a solar charger that does not have an external battery because the MacBook Pro has a battery inside of it already. We're gonna sacrifice this wall wart charger and we're gonna cut this cable off so that we have this tip. Then we're gonna attach this cable to the Genesun sun charge controller and hook up a, a solar panel and see how it works. Anderson connectors, crimp tool for Anderson connectors, wire stripper tool, wire cutter tool. I'll probably add some more stuff too. Lawn, landscaping, electrical wire, stranded electrical wire from Lowe's. Okay, so let's cut into this wire. I've, uh, I've never seen the inside of one of these before, so I'm curious. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna leave a little bit of room here so that I can put an Anderson connector on this end and on this end, and that way I haven't ruined the charger completely. I can still connect the wires back together, so. All right, so it looks like this is a two conductor wire with the second conductor on the outside. Not a huge fan of those. I'm gonna have to solder that, but um, it's kind of like a coaxial cable. Took a step down to the 14 AWG. Looks like that one's 18. Okay, so in checking the polarity of this, uh, I'm separating these wires so that I can prepare to put Anderson connectors on them. Uh, in checking the polarity, this is the positive and this is the negative. What I learned is that, and you probably can't read this, but it says output 16.5 volt, 3.65 amps max. What happens is these ends, these MagSafe 2 adapter ends have circuitry inside of them that reports to the MacBook Pro what the voltage and amperage is for this connection. So I ordered a 20 volt Genesun charge controller because my, this is a 60 watt, my 85 watt MagSafe adapter is a 20 volt. So I'm gonna have to go out and buy an 80 watt MagSafe adapter to sacrifice because this is the wrong, this is the wrong voltage. Uh, I, I don't wanna mismatch the voltage uh, because that would that would cause problems. So always always hook these things up to a multimeter before you attempt this. All right, this one is brand new, fresh off the Best Buy presses. No, don't cut me, no. Ah. This is so weird. This one's the uh, the 85 watt charger, and it looks like it's using aluminum wire to me. <laughs> I'm a little blown away by that. I think the other one was using copper, and this one's using, unless that's platinum. <laughs> Looks like aluminum to me. Jeez. It's got these weird um, fiberglass insulator strands. I assume they're fiberglass. I'm trying to get them all out of there. They're kind of hard to separate. Ugh. I'm gonna go ahead and cut that, because I don't need it. Well, anyway, this one's just going to be for uh, voltage testing, so it doesn't have to be perfect. Look at that, aluminum wire there, too. Crazy. Craziness, man. Aluminum wire is okay. It just, it tends to, uh, it tends to oxidize. Uh, it takes a long time to do it, and maybe, I don't know, maybe there was something about this sheath that would have kept it from oxidizing, but uh, when it oxidizes, it has a higher resistance, and that tends to cause fires, so... Kind of, kind of interesting that they're cheaping out on us. Let's test this, make sure that the uh, one with the insulator on it is still the positive. Also make sure that it's putting out 20 volts. I'm only seeing 3.163 volts. Maybe that's like a starting voltage or something. No, it does say 20 volt output, 4.25 amps, so we'll try it anyway. Maybe, uh, maybe it defaults to a lower voltage for some reason. Now, when I do Anderson connectors, uh, I like to have a little bit of um, thicker gauge wire that I solder on to whatever I'm using, and that just gives me something good to crimp onto. And uh, it also allows me to use heat shrink to cover up the raw conductors. 
I actually don't know if um, copper will bond to aluminum with solder or not. I guess we'll find out. Just putting some additional heat sink on there, or heat shrink on there, so that I have something to grab onto whenever I wrap it up with heat shrink later. Tin the wires. Now, the important thing to remember is going to be that this one on the outside here is uh, the negative and this one is the positive. So I guess from, from the wording on the heat shrink, the one on the bottom of the S is going to be the positive. Okay, and I could actually put some Anderson connectors on here now, uh, but I think what I'm gonna do is I'm just going to use the clamps to clamp it down permanently because I, but I really don't want to confuse which one is the battery or the, the part that goes to the laptop itself versus which one is the panel. I'm a little dyslexic and I tend to flip-flop things in my head sometimes, so having one of them permanently attached makes it easy for me to ensure that when I'm connecting the panel, it's going to the right one. So that's what I'm gonna do. So uh, this is labeled, the Genesun controller is labeled. We're gonna connect the 20 volt battery to this cable and the positive is actually on this side. So put that in there like that and I'll go get a screwdriver. Okay, it looks pretty good, no conductor showing. Awesome. Okay, so now I've got to make a pigtail for the panel side. I don't see any conductor showing. That's good. Good clean split there. Always like to give it a good tug and see if it moves. And that one does seem to be moving, so I'm going to crimp it again. Not a fan of loose wires. Yeah, that time did it. Okay. Okay, that one's good too. I always use my handy dandy meter as my guide for which side goes where. So it looks like these are gonna be like that. Okay. And then you just match it up over here and then screw it down. Okay, let's go outside and see if it works. All right, so this should be interesting. I've got my solar panels over here. There's my solar panel and I've got a cable running through the grass to right about here. So I've got my voltmeter hooked up to the panel right now, but the voltmeter isn't attached to the charge controller. So let's go ahead and connect that. All right, and we're seeing 20.88 volts from the panel. I was seeing like 21 volts from the panel earlier. And since this is a boost charge controller, I'm not entirely sure if it can handle uh, over voltage, over 20 volts, and bucket or not. So from the MagSafe connector, I'm seeing 20.65 volts, which is in line with the input. So I'm not sure what's going on with that. There's a chance that I'm gonna fry my MacBook until I use this for a while, that's always a possibility. I, I really don't know if I'm gonna fry it or not. So unfortunately, uh, there's no way around that for me. There's just no guarantees in life. So I've, I've done everything I can think of to, to get the voltage right and the amperage right. And the only thing to do now really is try it. So this is my work laptop. If I screw this thing up, I'm gonna have to rush out to Best Buy and buy another laptop today. So that's, that's really, <laughs> I really don't wanna do that. So hopefully that's, that's not what happens. Let's plug it in and see what happens. Oh, we got a light. We got the charging light. And let's watch the, uh, the, the charge percentage. It's at 94% right now. Let's watch the charge percentage and see if it climbs. The NPPT charge controller is blinking steadily, which is usually a good sign. The watt meter says 46.2 watts are going into the laptop right now. So that's not a whole lot. This is a 120 watt panel and it's probably not capable of delivering more than about 60 watts all by itself. But we'll see if that's enough to raise, raise the charge percentage here. I can always double up the panels. I can run them in series or, or in parallel, probably in series in this case, because I've got an eight amp max on my charge controller. The charge controller on the back says that the input voltage range is five volts to 63 volts. So, you know, I, I would hope that that has a buck 
feature in it as well as a boost feature. This is the GV Boost. So if you have like a very low panel voltage, like a uh, uh, 15 volt panel, it should boost up the voltage to 20 volts and still give you your power. So I've got 95%, uh, so it went up a percentage point. Let's, uh, that's cool, looks like it's working. Let's look at the voltage of the charge controller on the MacBook Pro side. 19.4 volts, that's interesting. I guess it doesn't keep it right at 20 volts. I guess it varies a little bit. 38, 39 watts going in right now. I don't know if lithium batteries have this or not, but it might be uh, the stadium effect. Sometimes your, your charging wattage goes down as the battery gets, gets more full. I'm not sure if that's only lead acid batteries or if that happens with lithium batteries as well. Solar panel is not shaded at all. 96%. So hey, I think we did it. I think it's charging. This is really cool. So, you know, is, is there an advantage to doing it this way versus uh, having an external battery? Well, yeah, I mean, there are advantages. The advantage is that instead of having your little Apple uh, wall wart, you know, your brick that you carry around with you to plug into the 110 volt AC system in the world, you instead just carry around this and this becomes your brick, right? You don't need this power meter. You just carry around the brick and your solar panel, your foldable solar panel. And now you've got a lightweight uh, solar charging solution if you're out in the field. Uh, you can only charge when the sun's out, but this is like an engineering puzzle for me, right? Because most of the, the MacBook Pro charging solutions that I've seen have an external battery and you don't need an external battery. I mean, the MacBook Pro has a battery inside already. So why are you carrying around a second battery? If you wanna leave your, your solar panel outside and leave the battery outside and leave all of that charging while you work somewhere else, that makes sense. And then you come back to the battery and you charge it. But if you're already outside and you're just gonna be outside, why carry around a second battery? You know, you can, you can charge up the battery on the MacBook Pro with a boost controller. So it's, it's just kind of interesting, 97%. So yeah, I'll include a link down below in the description where you can buy a 85 watt MagSafe 2 charging adapter so that you can get the 20 volt charging on your MacBook Pro Retina. If you have a different MacBook, this is not necessarily the voltage that you need to use. So you need to research this. You need to look at your, uh, your MagSafe adapter and verify the voltage. It's written right on the, it, it's got an input voltage and an output voltage. Verify the output voltage buy that if you buy a Genesun charge controller. Don't buy a voltage that's not matched up to the, the, the brick that you own. This is Jesse with Create This. I hope you found this video interesting or useful. If you learned something today, great. If I made a lot of mistakes or something and uh, you think I'm an idiot, let me know in the comments down below. If, if you have any questions about this setup, give me a comment down below also. I, you know, I, I try to answer questions as quickly as I can. If you like this video, go ahead and hit the like button down below. If you hate it, hit the hate button. Hit the, hit the dislike button. No big deal, man. As always, thanks for watching and please subscribe.